Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Thank you to Matt Emerson for emailing me and inspiring this episode. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the hot and dry mountains of Caliente, California. The arid climate features mountains and hills sparsely covered in dry grasses, low-growing desert bushes like Big Berry and Common Manzanita, Fremont Cottonwood, and the Blue Oak Tree. The ground cover is seasonally adorned with California fuchsia, western columbine, and deer grass, plus many more. The animals of the area include coyotes, jackrabbits, cottontails, mule deer, and bobcats. The more dangerous inhabitants of this area include black bears, on the higher slopes of the desert mountains, forests of various kinds of oak, willow, mesquite, and sycamore dominate the skyline and provide shade for all passers-by. On July 22nd of 2018, Elena Hansen was enjoying the freedom and space of her sprawling 70-acre ranchette. She enjoyed working with the horses, but still had a lot of work to put in just for maintenance. She always had chores to do to maintain the property, but the 56-year-old single mother embraced the hard work required. On this day, she was focused on fixing a water line for a new vineyard she was planning on constructing in the near future. The spring fed into a concrete box with a floodgate, and the spring had started to decrease in its flow. To Elena, that meant she would have to dig out any obstructions to keep the water flowing in order to execute her plan. She hiked up the box canyon where the spring was located with her two trusty ranch hands, Deke, who was a huge English mastiff, and Archimedes, a very large Irish wolfhound. Her dogs were her best friends in many ways, and today's events would once again confirm that fact to Elena. There was nothing alarming about the day, and she felt no strange or foreboding feelings as she worked. In fact, Deke and Archimedes had wandered off a short distance and found some shade to take a nap. The tough rancher entered her irrigation box and began clearing mud and gravel from the mouth of the spring that fed it. As she worked in the summer heat, she could see the spring begin to produce a greater flow of water. She had to stop periodically to wipe her brow and rest. As she worked, she drew the attention of a particularly predatory visitor who had somehow managed to slip past the sleeping dogs and approach to within ten feet of Elena. After digging around a bit more, Elena stood up to recompose herself. This time she was not refreshed by rest. Instead, she was alarmed by a rather small black bear only a few feet from her. She noticed the bear had simply been standing there, barely hidden by a small willow patch, as if it was waiting for her to notice it. As soon as their eyes met, the angry black bear pounced on Elena. She quickly tried to fold herself into the fetal position in the wet sand to protect her head and neck as best she could. The bear immediately clamped its jaws onto her head and bit and pulled at her ears. As it pulled her by her head, it managed to bite onto her face. It immediately began to tear skin and tissues from her face as it bit. It used its mass of only about 150 pounds to pin her to the ground by sitting on her. Elena is only around 100 pounds, so she wasn't much of a challenge to control for the bear. Even a small bear is much stronger than a very large man and quicker by far than a human. As the bear pressed Elena into the sand, it focused its attack on her head and face. It was clearly trying to rip her head off and possibly crush her skull. The terror that filled her mind was paralyzing, but somehow she fought back as hard as she could. The black bear sank its large canine teeth into Elena's right eye socket and ripped a small piece of flesh from that area. She reported hearing her tissues being ripped and the chomping sound the bear's jaws made as it meted out its destruction on her. It next focused on destroying her nose and mouth. Its jaws crushed and sliced the skin and tissues of her nose and rendered it into crushed and mutilated meat. She indicated that she could feel and hear her eyeball pop as the bear's teeth punctured it. The bear took Elena's face in its mouth and shook its head back and forth violently as she heard her bones popping and crunching beneath its pressure. She looked up at the face of the bear in time to see it spitting out an uncertain number of her teeth that had chewed from her skull. Elena realized that she had to fight for her life. This bear wasn't just surprised into a defensive attack, but was obviously trying to kill her by tearing her head off. She silently thought to herself that this bear doesn't know just who it's attacking. She took her thumbnail and jammed it into the bear's eye as hard as she could and began yelling for her dogs. Immediately after this last gasp of self-preservation, Elena lost consciousness. 
After a few seconds of unconsciousness, Elena woke up to the growling, grunting, and howling of the fracas that broke out between her dogs and the bear. As the dogs recognized what was going on, they attacked the bear as it sat on Elena. Now, all three large animals were fighting right on top of her. She could see a blurry series of teeth snapping and fur flying as the three animals bloodied each other. She was losing blood quickly as the animals battled, but managed to wiggle out from underneath the violent battle and tumbled down the hill a few hundred yards as the bear attacked Deke's stomach area. She struggled to her feet and stumbled a little over a quarter of a mile back to her vehicle, led by Archimedes and Deke, who had sustained minor injuries. As she situated herself in the driver's seat, she was shocked by her appearance in the rearview mirror, but was pleased to note that her white baseball cap was still on her head. What she thought was her cap was actually her mostly severed scalp. She loaded them all into her vehicle and drove the three miles down the road to a local fire station. The firemen were surprised and amazed to see a woman with her face in tatters drive herself up and start asking for help. Captain Kurt Merrill recalls asking her her name. She responded, Elena Hansen. He knew her well, but he couldn't recognize her through the destruction to her face. They immediately tended to her wounds as best they could while waiting for the Life Flight helicopter, which would take her to the UCLA Medical Center for treatment. At the hospital, the doctors discovered that the bear's attack had damaged Elena's orbit of her eye, and part of her cheekbone had been consumed by the bear. The bear also completely crushed her nasal bridge and even chewed off her ears, lips, and a segment of her left cheekbone. The damage to her dental arcade was tremendous as well, as the bear had broken her jaw, ripped out 14 of her teeth, torn up her gums, and broken the upper palate of her mouth. Medical professionals somehow put her face back together, with over 1,000 stitches during a 10-hour initial operation, describing her injuries as the worst they'd ever seen. She had to endure several plastic surgeries to make the reconstructed parts of her face look as normal as possible. Only a few years after the attack and subsequent surgeries, she says nobody in public ever seems to notice her scars, unless she points them out. She's quoted as saying, You'd be amazed what you can do if you have to, but you have to do something. The key to surviving is it doesn't matter what you do, just start the ball rolling. Do something, and then improvise as you go along. You never know where it's going to end up, but it's better than lying there and letting something eat your head off. Archimedes and Deke survived with minor injuries and still enjoy protecting her, even while they nap. The firemen at the fire station admired her toughness as they pointed out that she not only drove herself there, but had the wherewithal to give them her personal information. Elena's son, Alec Newman, said that it would take a lot more than some punk bear to get rid of his mother. A further comment of Elena's is quoted as, These scars are hard-earned trophies for what I've been through. They're actually something I can be grateful for. I'm proud of them. I can go talk to little girls and say, I'm still beautiful, even with these. Regarding her sentiments toward the bear, Elena is quoted as saying, They've got as much right to be here as I do, but until they start paying property tax, I'm going to assert my dominance. As for the bear, there is no source of what happened to the bear. To my knowledge, it has not been killed, and no one's pursuing it for such aims. On a more somber note, Elena's insurance company refused to cover all but 20% of her medical bills. Her expenses are calculated at around $300,000. She maintains she was first mauled by a bear, then mauled by Blue Cross. The podcast recounting the entire event is pinned in the comment below this video and gives you a great perspective on how admirable and hilarious Elena is. There is also a link to her book recounting her attack titled Chomp 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 in the sources. Since YouTube guidelines prohibit the posting of pictures as gruesome as Elena's, I've posted them on my Patreon, and the link is below, so click on it and take a look. After reviewing the details of Elena's attack, I'm left with a few questions. First, do you think her bear attack was a predatory attack or a territorial attack? If bears see us as a food source, then that's a very frightening reality. If they see us as competition, then they may continue to see us as an existential threat. Next, do you think she would have survived if her dogs had not come to her rescue? Also, do you think that the bear attacked her because she was occupying one of the few water resources in the area? Finally, would you agree that she is one of the most beautiful and witty bear attack victims we've ever covered on this channel? Please post your comments in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness and is fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below, so check out the bargains there while you shop for Christmas presents. 
As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country. Thank you to our patrons, Melissa Gottlieb, Patrick McHose, Megan Trend, Nathan P., Dina White, Cole Rodriguez, Aurora, April Donovan, Ryan Cernicky, Chris Marlar, Wayne Washington, Fluffy Feet, Cheyenne, April Donovan again, and Drone Adventures. Your support means the world to me.